Hey, we are Plant Based in the Burbs coming to you live for the animals, for the planet, for health and wellness. I'm Paige Parsons Roach and I'm Sherry Sherry, you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know it looks a little different in here today, but we got some good information that we want to share with you. So, hey, let's start with Paige. What you got over here, Paige? Oh my God. I want to say buying in the region, in your season, in the season, in your region is the best way to go. And for you to think about getting more raw in your lives. So I've got a beautiful, juicy grapefruit here. You can eat it like this or juice it up. We also have this beautiful papaya, which is in season. Squeeze some lemon or lime on there. You can also eat the seeds. Did you know that? You can yeah. put a salad in there, kind of spicy. They're so delicious. Okay, Sherry, over to you. What you got? Look, you know what? I got some kale, which is we, we considered superfood. This is amazing green powerhouse. So I got this kale. I got some char because that is also in season. And so look, all you have to do is take your char and your kale, if you like, mix them all together, saute them with some onions and garlic. And look what you got going on there. That's what you got. So well, and I wanted to give everybody this this eco tip is bring it home, put it in a jar with a little water on the bottom, cut the tips, and now you've got like a beautiful bouquet and it lasts a lot longer. And then my other tip is save your jar. So this was a sea moss jar. And then I have my kale stems that I'm gonna munch on throughout the day like a like a like a stalk of celery. So you know, save your jars and eat the stems don't throw them away now you can also cook up those broccoli stems y'all okay mm. so you can put that in there when you're cooking things up don't just throw out those broccoli stems because the stems have a lot of nutrients and so do i just learned the mushroom stems as well now that's a little mm -hmm. you know i'm not sure about that for me like i haven't quite figured that out but i did hear that in the clubhouse the other day oh, so go yeah. back to you <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to ask you, okay, so now, Paige, you have your, your kale in the water. Do you yeah. leave it on the do you leave it on the cabinet or do you put it in the refrigerator? It goes in the refrigerator. Now nice. I want to see everybody, you ought to look up. There is a chart that tells you what goes in the fridge and, and lasts the longest and what stays out on the counter or in a in a more like um, like a little uh, shaded area, even mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. want to look that up because I always thought you put the tomatoes in the refrigerator. Oh, no, no, actually, you don't. And the peppers, you want to leave those out now. If you cut them open, that's a whole nother story, right? So, we're, we're essentially talking to you about fruits and vegetables today, having the raw, and we have a special guest. So you're going to want to stay tuned. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. What? No, we have a special guest, yeah, but let me yeah. just that's right. we have a special guest. And Tom Hello. is here. Hi, Tom. We also have Autumn who's watching with Hello. us. Anyone else, feel free to write in the chat if you have any questions. But we have a special guest coming. But I want to say a few more things because. Okay. Yeah. Say some things too when you get there. Okay. All right. Get your blueberries. Now, do you shop at a farmer's market? Maybe you don't have one close to you. But if you do, please make it a habit. Get out there and do your farmer's market because you can also bring your baskets back and forth so that's what i do they love it and i'm like no cover i don't need the cover and then what i do is i kind of walk around i'm like oh would you like to try blueberry and people like take a few and then i come home and wash them I, it's kind of my thing but yeah so blueberries are in season definitely grab them now what do you have sherry take it to you you know i'm, I'm just going to tell you i'm just a firm believer you know I, I always had a habit of putting my tomatoes in the refrigerator Mm. And then I, you know, I read about, okay, keep your tomatoes on the, on the uh, counter. And plus I had watched some Italian show and the lady was making pasta and she had all the tomatoes out. So I said, okay, I'm going to do this. I was able to keep those tomatoes for almost two weeks, almost three weeks on my counter. So it, it, it is a truth into that. So carrots are also really good, high in beta carotene. This is also in season. And these beautiful babies, let me pull them up. <laughs> We're talking about heart, heart, he heart health. We're talking about wonderful beets. Beets Ooh. are so versatile. Look, they need to be washed. But look, you need you can juice them. You can roast them. You can you can uh, hide, dehydrate them. You can put them in your salad. I mean, these are so yeah. amazing. You can pickle them. I mean, there's all kinds of variety of things that you can do with 
beats. Wait, hang on though. We cannot wait. Hold those beats up because everybody take a beat, notice the beat, jam to the beat. Sherry Cherie made the most amazing, you heard it right here, salmon tofu. And it's up on Unchained TV. Go to unchainedtv.com and look at the most recent show because it's trending. But she used the beats Beat to roll. color for the tofu, the tofu salmon. Yeah, so to, make it pink, to make it pink, we used uh, beetroot in the marinade. So yeah, you're sure right about that, Paige. <laughs> this is another great red, uh, 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 shoot, speak, onion. Onions are so good for you too. You can also pickle these, saute red onions are amazing. You look at the colors of your vegetables, basically kind of telling you what is, we're talking about blood, we're talking about red, we talk about pumping. So these are these types of fruits or vegetables that work for, for that, you know? And pears are in season and this is an Asian pear. These are so good. There's, oh, look at you with your pears. And then my neighbor picked off the oranges, put them out front. We're going to do that with our lemons because we have a lot of lemons right now. And I'm going to be juicing these oranges, fresh squeezed orange juice coming straight out of my juicer. You can do it by hand. Yeah. Or I have a juicer that puts it straight through. I can add the peel and it just- I love it. I love it. And you know what? This is the season that we really need to have our citrus because- Think about what's going on right now. We got three major viruses that are really get causing havoc on everyone. We have COVID, we have uh, what is it, RSV, and then we have the flu, right? So all these types of uh, fruits and lemons and citrus and oranges and grapefruits, pineapple is like a flu fighter. You know, this is something that really just takes care of the cold and it's amazing and juice. It gives you, oh, it's just amazing. I love it. I love pineapple. I'm just addicted. So, hey, Tom, hey, Tina. So I wanted to talk about avocados, a staple in every vegan's diet, plant-based because you get a lot of protein and nutrients and fat, good fat. So definitely get your avocado on. And I also have a persimmon. I was so going to get one today. They're so good. I know, farmer's market. And then a sweet potato. Oh, you have one too. You can make chili with your sweet potato. You can make bake the sweet potato and then and put some yummy toppings like black beans. You can yeah, throw in some it. salsa, some vegan um, um, sour cream. You can just have some fun with these. Now, my dog loves the sweet and potato. So let, let me tell you what I did. So Charlie, over uh, the weekend, we have our kids here made some potatoes, you know, sweet potatoes for breakfast. And so there was a half a potato left. And I had saw someone said, you know, you can juice a, a sweet potato. So I'm juicing, I'm doing my beets, my pineapples, whatever. I took the half of the sweet potato, threw it right into my juicer and oh, juiced it. <laughs> I did not know you could juice it. That's great. <laughs> I juiced it. <laughs> wow. Okay, now we're gonna be talking about how you can grow your own in the new year, y'all. But because these are grown locally at a little farm stand, and I want to say, get the uglies. This one had a little, it's not even, it's just a little discoloration. It's not it's dirty. A it's a birthmark. <laughs> these are the ones that get, they are not on the grocery shelves because they go for perfection. And so these, these guys get kind of tossed out. I mean, the good news is some of these do get repurposed. Um, but we do need to do better. But, you know, Sherry and I volunteer with the Vegans of Los Angeles Vegan Food Bank uh, every month. And so some of the stuff from the farmer's markets gets repurposed and we get to give this beautiful fresh fruit out. We got, you know, kale coming out. We got blueberries. We got tomatoes. We got all kinds of things. You know, yes. here's, here's, another, here's another major superfood. Yes. Hi, Gwenna. This is another major superfood. People just are unassumed by, I think this is an unassumed, unassuming vegetable, but the celery is a powerhouse. So, you know, this is really, really good for you. You can juice it, you can eat it with peanut butter. So you have protein with a carb, you know, you can cut it up in your salad to give you the crunch and your chickpea salad, whatever you're making. This right here is amazing as great flavor. So what else do we have on my counter? Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, wait. Oh, you go right. ahead because I got to step right over here for a second. Go. I don't mean to be throwing garlic at you, but bam. Garlic is another good thing to have in a staple to have in your kitchen. 
it's great for when even having a cold, you can do garlic and, and you can do lemon and you can do onion, believe it or not, boil it. And you can drink this for a like a hot toddy or something like that with some lemon. It, all of these have healing properties. All these vegetables and items that we're showing today, they all have their healing property and they all are powerhouses. Whether the media says they're superfood, they're all superfood. Right. Pomegranate, y'all. You can juice them. You can eat them. You can put them in a salad. Pomegranate and some hemp seeds in your salad are an amazing addition and really kind of add that fun color with your dark greens. Now, let's talk a little bit about nuts. We got some walnuts here. Maybe you have a nutcracker. So we got these. I got these from the farmer's market. She's so kind. What? When you open this up, what does that nut look like? You know, mm -hmm. You know, well, the walnuts are really good for omega. And if you put in the comments what you think is for, eat it. Now, I have mine in a bag because I like to freeze them because when I buy them large like this, I just put them in the freezer and leave my nuts in there so they don't go stale I don't, because I had such a big bag. But generally, I, I, I can have it in a container and put it yeah. in the freezer. But I do use walnuts because walnuts are a great choice of uh, meat alternative. So yes. you can use walnuts. Paige made an amazing raw walnut taco lettuce wraps. They were fire and, you know, super simple. You know, it you was easy. how many ingredients was in it? Like two, three ingredients? Like five ingredients, like five. And it took like five minutes. And guess what? Sherry okay. and I are going to be guests on Chef AJ's show, cooking show this Saturday. You want to watch it. So if you're watching live right now and you're, you're catching this right here, right now, that would be December 24. We're yeah. doing it from 11 to 12, y'all. And I'm making those walnut easy breezy tacos. And I'm going to make some cheesy sauce with this. Now, we're not using any oil, sugar, or um, what's the third? Salt. Salt. The dish, right? We're going for the whole food plant-based. And that's what Chef AJ, you know, promotes. So I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to make that cheesy sauce. It's going to be so good. It is going to be yeah, so it, good. It, it, she, she made it. It's, it's amazing. Did oh, you it's put really that good. up on Unchained TV? Yes, it's up on Unchained TV. First of all, it's it's in, in studio show. Plus, yeah. you can grab both of these recipes that we're talking about, the, the tofu salmon with the and all that. And then blah, on oh, Unchained yeah, TV. Yeah, <laughs> Under recipes. So you can find it there, too. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay, so one more thing. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm trying to see if I showed all my stuff. Go ahead. Go okay, on. because we definitely have our special guest. We definitely want to bring that person on. So I just want to remind everybody you can make your own broth, save, ooh, save all your scraps, put it in some water, add some seasonings, garlic for sure, and just simmer for about 30, 40 minutes, then drain and strain, and you're going to have a delicious broth. So you can see what I'm doing in here already. I've got the garlic, and I've got some, uh, you know, just some stuff, some onion peels and things like that. Yeah. So how long does that last, last in the container before, it, you know, you have to, you know? Well, you can freeze it. So okay. what I try to do is work with it within like a couple of days, just because I feel like that's probably going to be the freshest. I'll try to make like a soup or I'll add it to something like a, like when I'm sauteing veggies, I use okay. a veggie broth on the bottom okay. versus oil. I'm just, you know, really working on not as much oil in my life. So I put a little layer on that, get it really hot, then throw all the, you know, veggies in there. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So, and so then we got this wonderful asparagus. Now, you know, these, you can do amazing things with asparagus. They're so good for you too. You know, mm -hmm. so you can go ahead and roast them, blanch them, cut them up raw if you want to eat them. These are also, again, everything we have is a superfood. Remember what is coming from the earth. It's a superfood. Okay. So we think about that. Um, I think that's all that I have right now. I did add my tofu because this is something that I always like to cook with. So, you know, like Paige and I, we talked about the holidays are coming up. What are you making for your holiday meal? Put some, put some ideas in the chat so that we know because we don't know everything and we're learning every day. And I'm sure our, our vegan audience has some really great tips for us. So we would really love to hear from you. Now, I just want to give a shout out for my cool sweatshirt to Vegan Power. So I'm going to show you this. You can grab it on the website, Vegan Power Co. And if you're at a sanctuary function at the Kindred Spirit Sanctuary Function Fundraiser, 
So Vegan Power Co., you can get this cool sweatshirt. And we both have something we want to share. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, hey. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. All my steps right here. There we go. Here we go. We got it. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. We both grabbed this book. We had Sean Russell on our show on yeah. Instagram, which, by the way, you can catch that live on Tuesdays at 1130 Pacific. So yeah. anyway, this is a book. And there's all kinds of people in here. Ingrid Newkirk. Oh, Jane Velez Mitchell is in here. Uh, and Angie Sabaki's in here. So, yeah, it's a lot of good uh, people in here. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Okay, well, let's bring on our special guest. Oh, yeah. Without yeah. further ado, oh, y'all. Drum, drum roll. Da, 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 da. Welcome, Mr. Charlie Johnson, healthcare provider, my soulmate. It's on the screen with us. <laughs> it's on the screen with us. And oh, nice. I just want to give you just a little background because he's, you know, kind of shy, really. Uh, <laughs> he's been in healthcare for over 30 years. He's a physician assistant for a major company, Kaiser Permanente. He has his master's in health sciences. He's been working for over 25 years in urology and men's health. So he really is an expert when it comes to things people don't want to talk about. Um, and so, ladies and gentlemen, here is my other half, Mr. Charlie Johnson. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Paige. Thank you, Sherry, for having me today. Uh, I, I love all the things you've been talking about, uh, especially uh, for uh, other things like onions and the beets. The beets are really good for us men, for the nitrates, uh, for that uh, area downstairs, for a good blood flow. And also um, the pumpkin seeds, gentlemen, the pumpkin seeds. Um, they're really good for uh, the prostate enlargement issues that BPH that we we tend to uh, acquire over some time, and that have, the pumpkin seeds are good for uh, even for women. Women it helps with the hot flashes uh, that may occur uh, during that time of life. Um, so those are good things to know. Nice. So Charlie, here's what I want to ask you, because you deal with people who are going into surgery. This is what I learned the other day. Mm -hmm. And they're already at a point where yeah. they need surgery. So it's not a, like a preventative right then. But yeah. what do you find are the like maybe three to five tips you leave them with? Because you have this impact with them. You're connecting with them and being a plant based, you know, vegan for seven years, like you have some, you have knowledge, you've been, you've been studying, you know? So tell us what, what do you let people know so that they can take it in and, and use, use it if they choose? Yeah. Okay. Well, we, we got to make a little adjustment here because yeah. I got him like crowded. He's a big guy. Yeah. Hold on. Well, yeah, the green. Oh, okay. Hi. Uh, <laughs> so usually 10 days before any surgery, uh, we tell patients no aspirin, no Motrin, no Advil, no fish oil no vitamin E and no herbal supplements 10 days before. Those are all blood thinners. Um, they can be considered that. So those are the biggest things we talk about. And a lot of patients talk about why I have garlic in my diet often or um, multiple vitamins. And they don't, they don't realize that vitamin E is um, part of that multiple vitamin family that will uh, can cause, um, you know, increase risk of bleeding for a, a major surgery. So those are the kind of things, general things I talk about. Uh, for most patients, because a lot of patients don't think of their supplements as medications or their supplements could uh, cause harm um, before a, a major surgical upper procedure. So that's pretty much what I say. Okay. Now here's my big question too, because I know I've had several friends be in the hospital, have surgeries, uh, you know, and then be released with a hamburger and fries. So yes. what do you say about dietary changes for people so that they're, you know, educated and, you, you know, you have so much knowledge and, mm -hmm. you know, you're studying all the masters, you're studying Dr. Milton Mills, you're studying Dr. Joel Kahn and Dr. Yes. Siddiqui and, you uh, know, and Brooke Goldner who talks yes. about lupus, you yes. know, and you deal with um, yes. men's health, colon cancer and yes. uh, erectile dysfunction. Yes. Tell, yes. Us, yes. tell us that, Charlie. Well, I, that's what I, I actually talk about Dr. Angie Siddiqui and Dr. Jay Khan and Joe Khan and also Dr. Bellardo, a cardiologist. And I use, and Dr. Batiste, uh, the cardiologist uh, that we have here at, at Kaiser. And we talk about how a plant-based uh, plant diet is better for the colon, the GI system, uh, to excrete all the stool uh, over time. And because the meat is gonna sit there like sludge and, and, and it isn't, you can't excrete it very well. 
uh, for the uh, circulatory system. Uh, we talk about how a plant-based diet is better um, for that to, um, to reduce the cholesterol uh, that may clog the arteries that will also cause the heart disease and that for, for men that will cause the, the symptoms of erectile dysfunction over time. Um, so I try to say it, you know, compassionately and I tell them, look, I get compassionate about it. I'm like Ms. Ms. Velez Mitchell because she's very passionate when she talks about animal cruelty. I get like that when I talk about our diet for um, for our health and I get I have to remind myself that maybe everybody's not there uh, like I, I am. So I have to be um, cognizant of that and, and not act like I'm, you know, this, yeah, holier than thou. Wow. Kind of you know, so I, I use those examples over time to say, and I ask them respectfully, what is it that you want? How do you want or how do you view your life? What do you want out of your life? And, and I let them tr try to decide. Yeah. And I'm like a sounding board as to what it is that they have further questions. And if I can't answer those questions, I refer them on to, you know, like the shows we talk about, The Game Changer, um, all those kind of things. And you will see the doctors, some of our Kaiser doctors are on that um, uh, uh, video there. And that kind of solidifies the things that I've been trying to, um, you know, tell. I tell them about you. I have put you guys on the screen <laughs> in the room. I said, look at Paige, look at Sherry. Uh, plant-based in the burbs. Look at how you can make meals that are very um, good for the family and nutritious and good, taste good. I love it. Okay, listen, we got a question from the oh audience, my. Tom. Mm. He okay. wants to know, Charlie, do you recommend B12 prior to surgery? Not necessarily. You don't need it. Um, would you believe that? And I heard this, I think, from maybe um, doc, um, the, the lupus doctor, that B12, you can't escape. I mean, it's, it's in the... Um, it's in the poop from the vegetables, right? I guess, isn't that pretty much? And so, but B12, I don't really think you need to def, uh, defer from that because it's not what we consider a blood thinner uh, when it comes to surgery. Well, that's really we, important. So help? yeah, pay attention y'all. Okay, now we have a lot of people who are vegans yes. in this space. What would you say are three top, top things that we can do, men and women, mm to stay the healthiest through the seasons? I know that's kind of an open-ended question there, but you know, maybe you got three tips here for everyone who's out there as a vegan, and then we'll get to the pre-vegans, uh, you know, the well, folks that haven't yet made the transition. Go for it. Well, knock on wood. I, I don't believe I've been, well, at least I don't remember. Okay, COVID hasn't gotten me yet so far, knock on wood. And so I believe with the plant-based diet that we have been uh, following, Sheree and I, it's helped me I, because we do the gingers, we do the lemons, we do the plants. Um, we do I, elderberry every morning. El, uh, every morning, I get this elderberry uh, chewy um, vitamin from Whole Foods, vegan, yeah. uh, and it's vegan. And I and I, I I rely on that. And then when I start to feel ill, I will get elderberry tea um, and lemon, uh, ginger. All those kinds of things are uh, are very good. Also, the lycopenes. I can't. I cannot overemphasize the lycopenes and tomatoes, um, tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. And so you can make a, like a puree or tomatoes and garlic and onions and um, maybe um, saute it in some, well, not much oil, but try to saute it down and consume that. Put that over a baked potato uh, and nutritional yeast over that. Uh, or maybe some black beans just to give it and some avocado. Those are the kind of things that we try to adhere to. Um, to help to stay healthy. All righty. Oh my, this has been so great. We're not done yet, but I wanted to give Sherry a chance because I know she coaches you <sighs> and I wanted to give her an opportunity. And the thing that I learned the other day about you, Charlie, that I found so fascinating, what you said about your markers, number yeah. one, and number two about your propensity or your genetics for yeah. certain diseases. And I want to say like, that was such an eye opener that yeah. what I hear you wanting to put out is preventative. You know, if you're at the doctor and you're in that, you're having that pre consult, you're having that consultation for your surgery. Yes. You know, you got to make some serious changes at the end, but how about preventative? So, um, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are the uh, knowing your cholesterol levels, mm -hmm. know the hemoglobin A1C level, and know your blood pressure. 
Um, those are the things you need to know that the LDL, um, the so-called bad cholesterol, it should be less than 99 or less than 90, I should say. Um, the total cholesterol should be less than 200. People are at maybe 190, 180. Um, those are the things you have to be watching. Every year, uh, we do our blood test every November. Um, so it's like clockwork that I ask for that. And then because we are vegan, I'll ask for the vitamin B12. I'll ask for the vitamin D levels. All those things are, oh, it's all palmetto. Uh, yeah, hey, Tom. Yeah, it's all palmetto. That's interesting. There are some thoughts on that that some urologists believe that for the PSA, the PSA for men is another level for men, uh, for, uh, men that we need to know, starting at the age of 45 to 50. But if there's a prostate cancer history in your family, I say start getting your PSAs in your 40s, early 40s. But sal palmetto, they use that for good prostate health. But some, don't quote me, Tom, on this, but some providers believe that if you take sal palmetto, it sometimes can mask the true PSA reading prostate specific antigen uh, level. I don't take it because I want to know my true number. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'd rather know my true number than maybe something that could be masking what it, what, what, what it would really be. Mm -hmm. So if it's good, if you're taking it for, for urination issues from a BPH standpoint, okay, that's fine. Um, but also the nitrites and, and the beets, um, the, the, the pumpkin seeds, because that will help to it decreased the size of an enlarged prostate, so they say, a natural. I'll be, I'll be honest. I can't tolerate the Flomax, the Hydra, and Terazosin, the, um, the things that the pills that they give you for an enlarged prostate because it caused too many, too many side effects for me. Triglycerides, a ninety is ninety. Okay, I got my glasses. Okay, pretty good. Um, but those are the things that um, I tell the patients to, uh, to those numbers. Know your numbers, especially if there's Alzheimer's risk in your family. And especially if there's stroke history in the family, that's the key. Uh, and I think I had my carotids checked recently to, to make sure there's no plaque in the carotids. I had an MRI of my head to make sure there's no plaques or, uh, you know, lesions in the in, in the brain. You know, we talk about MS um, or brain tumors. Um, and I've had um, the CT of my of my chest um, to make sure there's no you know something suspicious in the lungs and the cardiovascular system, ask your doctor these questions. They'll give them to you. They'll do it. And they'll applaud. Good for you, Tom. They'll applaud how how um, tenacious you are in, in trying to take care of your own health. This is so amazing. I'm blown away. Back to Sherry, though, because we're going to give Sherry an opportunity because she is a fitness coach, y'all. She is all about that. And, um, you know, we've been we've been dropping in some eco tips along the way. So, you know, we got we got some eco tips in here. Y'all bring your own. Bring your own, y'all. Bring your own. That's that's a key. You know what that means. Bring your own water bottle. Bring your own straw. Bring your own, you know, utensils. If you're going out and about, just keep it in your car. But over to you, Sherry, because you know we really want to give people the fitness stay, Charlie, because she's coaching. She's coaching you. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> no, but what I wanted to say was I really want to kind of reiterate what Charlie is saying. And what he has, I have learned just from him being in the healthcare uh, profession is that you have to be your own advocate for your health. You really do. And regardless of where we're doing the thing by changing our nutrition to the best, you know, if you are consuming all these beautiful, glorious things that we have that are coming from the earth that should help you stay on the right track. But you do need to know where you are. Um, you have to take control of your own health. And as he said, get all your markers. So that yes. way you can start tracking yourself and you can also see yes. having your own markers that your diet is really helping you. Yes. But and your own uh, advocate. Yes. yes. So your own advocate. So you have the food in track. Next, you got to move the body. Yeah. Our body is made to move. It is not made to sit down. The more you sit, you get stiff. You know, your back hurts, your neck hurts. We're all up in front of the computer, bent over, hunched over. So moving the body at least 30 minutes a day. And if you don't know what to do, there are professionals. Mm -hmm. I mean, personal trainers 
people give them a bad rap, but they are professionals. We have to be educated. We have to be certified. We have to have continued education. Every two years, we have to have so many before we can be recertified. So if you don't know what you're doing or you don't want to cause any in injuries or you really just want to step your game up, then you can look for a coach in your neighborhood or in your area that can help you. And if you're already on the path to doing well with your exercises, then you can get up and walk. You can do all kinds of things. You can get on YouTube. You can get on all these different channels. There's all kinds of online type of training. If you are just not motivated, you're not enough, but you have to take control, right? Mm -hmm. You have to take control of yourself and you have to be able to admit that I can't do this on my own. The word I wanted to say, I, I don't want to say, but I can't do this on my own and I need a professional to help me. Just like when you go to the doctor, you need a professional. Like when you get a plumber, you need a professional. When you get your car fixed, you need a professional. So when it comes to taking care of your body and you want to work out and you want to see change, you need to hire a professional. So yeah, that's yeah. my that's my that's my tip today. She's, she's <laughs> my personal trainer, and I get up in the mornings at six thirty to uh, train with her uh, on with her Zoom uh, clients uh, for thirty minutes, just thirty minutes. That's everything, yeah. and I'm sore uh, when I train. Out. She's she's tough. And I'm, and I'm a big guy. I'm an old athlete. So it's it's not like she's my wife. I'm saying that it's true. And she gets uh, me motivated. And I, I, I thank God I live with her. <laughs> well, I'm going to just leave us all with a couple more things. Yeah. Get yourself a lemon squeezer. Squeeze that lemon. This is what I've been starting my day with because it really gets everything going. Lemon. And ginger. And what mm -hmm. Sherry recommends too, and we both recommend, is you get some frozen blueberries or raspberries or pineapple and throw it in your water as well. So you're constantly filling up your water. You want a big one. You want to be drinking half your body weight in water. So, you know, Sherry talked about that too. And then I just want to circle back to, Tom brought this up. Ah, we have a... <laughs> I like to encourage Tom you. Tom knows right? Tom knows that. He got it, right? Tom Keep it on the call. Tom 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 Tom. Compost. <laughs> Compost. Now, you yeah. don't have to do all this, yeah. but you can do one of these that you're working with. And if you yeah. just, you're not going to make yourself your own homemade broth, but yeah. get the scraps out of the trash, y'all. We got to do that because it's creating methane and mm -hmm. we want to reduce methane. So we can do this. We can do this together and everyone can compost and you literally can put it in your green trash, put it back into the soil. You can like take it out to nature and drop it down in there, or you can start your own garden. You can make your own soil by composting. So just get the scraps out of the trash. Yeah. Back to you two for the final words. That's what I'm going to say. Get it out. Okay. Make it happen. Over to you. <laughs> final one. Final well, words. also uh, for every man and woman, colonoscopy, colonoscopy, colonoscopy. Oh. Please, please get those colonoscopies. Know what's going on. Please. The GI system, the polyps are no joke. And so you want to make sure, yes, drink plenty of water, um, but make sure you get those uh, those tests, those annual tests, like they tell you. Well, they're, they're not annual, but at least get one done, and then from there you may go five years, sometimes ten years. sometimes ten years if it's a good report. Yeah. Like, get yes, get tested. <laughs> and so, okay, I guess the last one, like Paige hit on the water. Now it's really difficult to drink water because it's cold outside, and most people do not ones. want <laughs> to drink water. So now. It's even more challenging. So you have to find more creative ways. You can also hydrate yourself with vegetables. Cucumber is very high in water. Zucchini is high in water. You can find a lot of vegetables that are going to help you because it's very important. Just like he's, uh, Charlie was talking about the colonoscopy, water is kind of like the oil. You got to keep things moving and slushing and throwing through. And if you dehydrate it, things are going to dry up. Right. So get your water, drink your water. Make sure you get enough rest, people. That's important. Yes. We don't need to Have do everything day, 24 hours a day. We don't need to be moving, but get Stay some time. get some sleep. And that's pretty much it. And we want to say happy holidays to you guys. And listen, Paige and I are going to take a break. Right, Paige? Aww. Just we'll a be, little something, something. Spend some time oh, with our yeah, families. Just to be with our family. So we want to wish all of you who've been supporting us all year and uh. always show up. Happy, happy holidays. Yes. Be with your loved ones. Yes. Really enjoy them and cherish them. And then we'll see you in the new year. Happy new year coming up and Merry Christmas. <laughs>
to all the angels that are our, our guides for yeah. all the folks that maybe you've lost this year, last year, in the couple of mm -hmm. years and so forth. These are their, you know, this is their Wait. love. They send it every day. They're keeping mm -hmm. us safe. Mm -hmm. And just remember that and be grateful. Don't make us cry. Don't make us cry. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> we love you. Yeah. 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 We'll see you in the new year, y'all. We'll see you in the new year. Thank you so much, y'all. Peace. Peace and blitz. <laughs> okay, hold on. I do have to push the end button. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm freezing. <laughs> we'll 